Hi, in today's video, we are going to dive into Azure AD Conditional Access, Azure AD Identity Protection. I'll explain all that you need to get started, and by the end of the video, you'll know a lot more about these very important topics that will help you to learn Azure AD from the very beginning and to pass that all important MS102 certification. Stay tuned. So in our final section on implement and manage identity and access in Azure AD, we are going to be looking at implement and manage secure access in which we are going to plan for identity protection. We're going to look at how you implement and manage Azure AD identity protection, and plan conditional access policies and implement and manage conditional access policies. So lots of good stuff to get through, uh, after which we will have finished that uh, section and we'll be on to managing security and threats uh, for the next uh, video. So let's get into uh, implementing and managing secure access. So the first step is to plan for identity protection. And the best way to plan for this within Microsoft 365 is to review this uh, learn.microsoft.com article, which as ever, will be posted in the description of this video. This tells you all about what identity protection actually is, why it's important, what it does, how you investigate risks, and so on and so forth. And essentially, identity protection allows organizations to accomplish three key tasks. This is to automate the detection and remediation of identity-based risks, to investigate risks using data in the portal, and to export risk detection data to other tools. And we have a nice little diagram here, which shows what that's all about. We can expand on that actually and have a little bit of a look. And we can see that we have unique insights powered by trillions uh, of signals um, which are auto-generated, uh, high-quality heuristic-based detections and detections from other first parties. We have expert-generated security researchers, customer support, dedicated human labelers, end-user-generated. We've got build feedback loops, end-users, admins, and secops, and remove errors. And the assess risk levels via real-time evaluation engine within uh, Azure AD Identity Protection relate to risky users, risky sign-ins, and risky apps. And with that in mind, identity protection can help to secure access via policy enforcement and unified investigation experience with uh, auto remediation with risk based conditional access policies. So I hinted at identity protection in the last video in this series that uh, conditional access ties in uh, quite heavily with Azure AD identity protection. We've also got Azure portal identity protection risk reporting dashboard and the Microsoft graph API. Seamless integration via Azure monitor stroke Microsoft Sentinel. Um, everything near enough as makes no difference now integrates into the Microsoft SIEM tool, uh, SIEM being security information and event uh, management or monitoring, one of the two. Uh, my acronyms are not always strong, but it's one of the two. And such a great tool though for monitoring and getting visibility. And routing risky alerts also to third-party SIEM tools, uh, such as, I guess, Splunk would be another example, but there are many, many out there. So, so, so good uh, Azure AD identity protection. So why is this automation important? And there's some information here on why that is the case and uh, a link to an article on cyber signals defending against cyber threats with the latest research insights and trends. I mean, this is dated February the 2022. So uh, I would be dubious as to how 
recent that is, but uh, nonetheless, it is it is there. Maybe this Learn article should be updated slightly. And it shows that uh, there was a, shared, a share of threat intelligence brief, which included statistics that uh, were analyzed, uh, 24 trillion security signals combined with intelligence tracked by monitoring more than 40 nation state groups. Uh, from January 2021 through December 2021, uh, Microsoft have blocked more than 25.6 billion. That's a heck of a number. Billion. Azure AD brute force authentication attacks. And that number alone shows why organizations must take cybersecurity seriously. They cannot ignore it. The sheer scale of signals and attacks requires some level of automation to be able to keep up. Now, at its core, identity protection detects risks of many types and these include things like anonymous IP address usage a typical travel now that's uh, an example of somebody signing in from an unusual location that uh, is is not typical for them uh, there's also impossible travel where somebody may log in from London, UK, for example, and then 10 minutes later, that same user logs in from uh, Sydney, Australia. Now, that's an example of impossible travel because that just simply couldn't happen unless somebody had spontaneously invented teleportation, which I really wish they would because I really hate travel. But I digress. Um, so what we can do as well with all of these risk uh, types that are baked into identity protection is that we can investigate this risk with uh, policies uh, that uh, and reports that administrators can use for investigations in identity protection. And these are risky users, risky sign-ins, and risky detections. It also enables you to set risk levels, categorize those risks into tiers of low medium and high. And it's important to know that Microsoft doesn't provide specific details about how risk is calculated. Each level of risk brings higher confidence that the user or sign-in is compromised. So for example, as it says here, something like one instance of unfamiliar sign-in properties for a user might not be as threatening as leaked credentials for another user. So, there is lots of great information in this document, as ever, with learn.microsoft.com. One of my favorite resources to learn more about all things Microsoft 365 and Azure AD. It also shows you some of the required roles that identity protection needs uh, users to be. Uh, so um, it shows here what a global administrator can do as compared to a security administrator or a security operator. So familiarize yourself with the roles that can get access to Azure Identity, uh, Azure AD Identity Protection, I should say, and when you might want to assign those because you, you never want to give privileges that are unnecessary. Standing privileges and uh, overprivileged users are not a good thing. So think carefully about when you need to assign these and of course the licensing that is required in order to use the feature and this particular feature requires Azure AD Premium P2 licenses uh, which come uh, as part of various license packages for example Microsoft 365 E5 contains Azure AD Premium P2. Moving on to another document on learn.microsoft.com which obviously I will also include in the description. More about planning your identity protection deployment. We have some prerequisites here. Uh, we have information on the importance of engaging the right stakeholders, which is absolutely crucial, and communicating change as well. Um, but the way you really want to be starting is reviewing existing reports, so investigate risk detections, remediate risks and unblock users, and, and make any bulk changes using Microsoft Graph PowerShell. Um, what you also need to be mindful of, again, is a plan for conditional access risk policies, and 
As we've already alluded to, identity protection sends risk signals to conditional access to make decisions and enforce organizational policies like requiring multi-factor authentication or password change. So have a good look through this uh, document. And now, without any further ado, we shall move on to looking at Azure AD identity protection and a bit more in conditional access itself. So here we are in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center once again, entra.microsoft.com. And we are going to scroll down to the protect and secure section once again. The two key areas that we need to be looking at in relation to this topic are identity protection and conditional access. We're going to start with identity protection, so we'll click onto that right now and let's go through and see what we have in this area. I'm going to use my favorite new feature within Microsoft Entra to collapse the side panel and get ourselves more screen real estate, which I love. When you go in here into identity protection, you're taken right into the overview screen. Now I don't have much in the way of information on this overview screen as my tenant is a demo one and uh, I have no new risky users detected. In a short while, we'll uh, look at simulating that and uh, give you an idea of what that can actually look like. So um, what you're going to see on here is this dashboard view on counts and uh, so on and so forth. You can also get to tutorials here to get more information on what the product is, what are the risks, and lots of great stuff. Tips on how to diagnose and solve problems, which is great. But here under the protect section, we get into the real good stuff. We can look at our two main risk policies within Azure AD identity protection. The first one is our user risk policy. This and the sign in risk policy are very similar and they are very, very easy to configure. So we'll click on the user risk policy first and we can see that uh, the policy name is not something we can change, but we have the option to assign users to it, uh, set the user risk level and then set the controls for access. And then finally, do we want this policy to be enabled or disabled? What is the policy enforcement actually going to do? So first and foremost, let's take a look at our users. So we will go and check on users and we can include and exclude again, uh, particular users or select individuals uh, and groups or include all users. I'll select all users in this instance and now we can go to the user risk and you can see on the right hand side here that uh, we can select the controls to be enforced. So what is the risk level going to be set to? Is, um, is a user risk going to be perceived as low and above, medium and above or high? This is all going to depend on your organization's uh, security posture, their, um, their appetite for risk, not that anyone should have an appetite for risk, but their appetite for risk management, I should say. But uh, let's, for this example, just set that to medium and above, but that is something that is very much going to be tied to your organization's own policies and uh, any uh, industry regulations that uh, your organization is required to adhere to. So let's just click on done there. We've got our user selected. We've got our user risk selected. Under controls, let's click on uh, controls and we have two choices here. If there is a user uh, risk policy match, what do we want to do? What controls do we want to be enforced? Do we want to block access? Again, this choice is going to be based on your organization's security posture. Or do we want to allow access and require a password change? So this is something we can do. We can allow access and require the user to change their password. So let's select that 
for this particular example and click on done. Do we want the policy to be enforced? Uh, we, we probably do. So let's click on enabled and click on save. And that is our user risk policy uh, all set up and good to go. Now, let's take a look at the sign-in policy. So make a note, the change that we have in our controls here, we've got a visual representation, uh, medium and above for the user risk, all users and require a password change. So this is something that if you're doing the exam, you might get asked, what are the controls that can be implemented between these two policies? The user risk policy gives you the ability to allow access and require a password change. Whereas the sign-in risk policy, very, very similar principles. You can target it to all users. You can select the sign-in risk, same principles. And in access, you can block or allow access. But in this case, it's require a multi-factor authentication challenge to be completed. So this is something that may well come up in the exam. And it's one that I always really struggle to remember which one is which. But there we are, we can uh, enable that one as well and we can go ahead and save the policy. Okay, jolly good. Next, we have multi-factor authentication registration policy. Now here is another way that you can require Azure AD multi-factor authentication registration for your users in Microsoft 365. So we can set up this policy to be targeted to uh, include or exclude users again, all users or select individual users and groups. And we can go ahead and select all users or individual groups uh, as needed. And that takes us back to the Microsoft Entra Admin Center main page when we click on close. So that's a good moment to pause and actually mention that the most recent guidance from Microsoft, and I will include another link for this, is to not configure your risk policies or your sign-in risk policies uh, from within Azure AD Identity Protection itself. It's suggested to do it from Azure AD Conditional Access uh, itself, and you can actually migrate policies from identity uh, protection over to conditional access. We'll not cover that migration itself in this video, but I'll give you a link to it so you can uh, review it at your leisure. But next, we look at creating these policies in conditional access, and then we will take some time to look back in identity protection and try and generate some risk activities that we can examine. So back in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center again, let's now go back to protect and secure and into conditional access. Now, as we need to cover conditional access in the scope of this particular video, we'll have a quick look through this area, this overview page is where we will start. And we can see that we get a policy summary here. So we've got a policy snapshot. We can see that there are five policies enabled, zero in report only, and a zero set to off. We'll explain what all of these mean in a moment. We can see the users where policies are applied. We can see devices, and uh, sign-ins from unmanaged or non-compliant devices. We can see how conditional access relates to applications as well and browse a list of apps that are not protected by policies. And we can also look at named locations uh, and much more. From here, we can also directly create a policy we can also create a new policy from templates, which is a preview feature. We'll take a look at that after we have a look at the main policies area. So if we click onto policies, we can see the policies that we have in place at the moment. And we briefly touched on these in the last video. We have 
five policies in place to require MFA for admins, require MFA for external and guest users. We have block legacy sign-ins that don't support MFA. And these two at the bottom relate to identity protection. Require MFA in a password change when high-risk users are detected and require MFA when risky sign-ins are detected. So uh, let's take a look at these two first in actual fact. We'll just stick with the topic of identity protection and risk-based policies just for the moment. And then we can compare how they are to uh, more standard conditional access policies, if you like. So let's take a look at this one first. Now, any conditional access policy is made up of conditions and actions. So we can see, and, and, and I always find that the, the interface for this is not always the best. It's one of these based on the traditional Azure portal blades that expand out to the right as you click on it, which I think is in bad need of a refresh, but that is by the by. But if we go into a policy here, we get to see the name. We can go into the assignments section and see all of the users included and specific users excluded. So here, if we click on there, we can see who's included, who's excluded. And we can see that certain guests or external users are excluded here. Now, this is a conditional access policy that was set up from uh, the Microsoft 365 Admin Center in an earlier stage. So um, very, very good to, to have these created near enough automatically in that in that process. Now you get a lot of warnings as you're creating these policies along the way. It tells you don't lock yourself out. This policy is going to affect all your users. So this is why it's important to consider who you are applying your conditional access policies to and importantly to have exclusions. Always exclude your emergency access or break class accounts. We'll come back to that in a bit more detail in a moment. Now, next, Cloud apps or actions. And, and again, always um, take a look at these information circles that you can hover over. And sometimes they give more detail than, than others, but always useful to hover over. But cloud apps or actions. Uh, now this will control access based on all or specific cloud apps or actions. And we can select the drop down here to um, base this on cloud applications that we can select all or select a selection of. We can select user actions here and we can select actions that uh, this policy will apply to such as registering security information or registering or joining devices. We can also use authentication context which is used to secure application data and actions in apps like SharePoint. And I can't believe they're still calling it Microsoft Cloud App Security on an actual life portal. It should now be called Defender for Cloud Apps. Shame on you, Microsoft, if anyone is listening. I mean, it's been, what, at least two years since that product has been renamed? Very poor. But authentication context, you can learn more about that by clicking on the buttons. But um, essentially, it's... Uh, going to apply almost what it says on the on the description really it's, it's very simple really and that the context via which you authenticate is related to uh, the application uh, that you are using so um, it's one of those things that's quite hard to put into words so check out the description uh, links that I will include, but an authentication context is a, is a really cool feature and one that you should have a look at. Um, okay, so we'll leave this one as cloud apps and you can see here, if you go on to select apps, then we can do some filtering. We can uh, filter. Um, this is a preview feature here and we can put some attributes in here and run syntaxes and add expressions to 
important to filter by the cloud apps and then we can go and actually select the cloud apps that we want to include or exclude in our policy here so uh, office 365 is a, is a commonly used one this will bundle up certain features such as microsoft flow and forms teams Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and so on and so forth. But you can go through these and find more granular applications that you can apply to the conditional access policies. So uh, we'll, um, we'll just come out of that for now, and we will move on to look at, uh, at conditions. Um, so we have one condition selected in this policy. And this equates to user risk. You can see the top two in the conditions selections are user risk and sign-in risk. And this equates entirely to what we've discussed already about Azure AD identity protection. This relates to it uh, and does near enough the same thing, but in a different uh, interface, shall we say. So if we click on user risk in this case, we can configure the user risk to be uh, on or off. So configure the risk uh, to apply the policy to the selected risk levels, which we can set, as we saw before, to high, medium, or low. And uh, just while we're here, we can, uh, well, we can't do it on this one because we've already accept, uh, selected user risk. So we can come back to that in a second. But um, so we've got that selected and that, then takes us to access controls. What do we want to do? We've looked at our assignments, uh, what we want to target. Now, what do we want to do if there is a match to these conditions? So access controls uh, give us the ability to block or grant access. So you can be very specific on how you want to either grant or block access to these uh, situations with conditional access. And we can grant access and require multi-factor authentication uh, in this case, or we can require authentication strength. Um, or in this case, because this is an identity protection uh, related MFA conditional access policy, we, um, we're going to require MFA, but also require a password change to be applied. And we get this warning triangle here telling us that require password change can only be used when policy is assigned to all cloud apps, which, which we saw here earlier. We have this little red, not so little red warning here, which says that all cloud apps must be selected when the require password change grant is selected. So there we go. I believe, uh, in fact, that's because I left that selected on none. Spot the deliberate mistake. And that clears that error away very nicely for us. So we are good to go with this policy now. I mean, this one is already live and on. But there are three states uh, to which a conditional access policy can be set. It can be uh, turned off completely. It can be set to reporting mode only, which will enable administrators to see what would happen uh, if a policy was matched. But the actions that are in the policy will not be applied because it's in reporting mode only. And this is a very, very good way of testing out your conditional access policies. And then and only then when you're ready to implement them on a a full or wider basis, then you should set the conditional access policy to on. So there we go. Let's just take a very quick look. If we go uh, back to conditional access policy, let's look at the at the other identity protection related policy, which is require MFA when risky sign-ins are detected. Let's uh, just go through. We'll see very similar uh, selections here, but uh, we've got all users again we've got all cloud apps selected there we have one condition where we have not user risk this time but sign-in risk and here we actually 
have this configured and set to yes, but we have the sign-in risk levels this policy will apply to. And on this occasion, we have it set to two particular uh, levels, which is high and medium. There are no other selections within here that we are configuring. In access controls, we have uh, grant access and require multi-factor authentication because that is what this particular identity protection needs to do. So that's entirely appropriate. So all good, all good indeed. So that explains how the identity protection or the risk-based, if you want to call them by their proper names, uh, risk-based conditional access policies work within actual conditional access itself, rather than the Azure AD identity protection area of Azure Active Directory uh, or within the Microsoft Entra portal. So what does this look like when you're creating policies yourself? Let's, uh, let's take a look at that um, right now. So we'll go ahead and we will create a new policy. So we can give it a name and we can call it, uh, I won't create this or, or I'll create it and I'll leave it switched off, but I'll just call it policy one. I will select some users, so I will uh, select um, specific users. Uh, I'll select Chandler Bing and I will add him into the policy. I would always, absolutely always exclude my break class emergency access accounts here, or uh, you can do that by directory roles as well. So let me just search for myself. Not that this really would be my break class account name in a real live non-demo environment. I would never have a or one with a name like that, it would be a specifically named emergency access account. And although it would be excluded from conditional access there, it would certainly, in my book anyway, there is much debate about this in our sort of circles, but it would have some form of additional secondary authentication tied to it, but not conditional access. Perhaps uh, an OAuth token or a FIDO2 key, but that is a discussion, a debate, not for here. Now, we've got our selections there. Cloud apps or actions, we uh, can select what we want here. Again, we can choose the, uh, the cloud apps, the user actions, the authentication contacts that we want to apply to, for example. Um, we will just go with cloud apps again for this and we will select all cloud apps. It gives us some warnings there not to lock ourselves out. Conditions. Now, we've already looked at user risk and sign-in risk. There is also device-based conditional access. So you can configure device platforms here. So we can turn that on and we can include or exclude by any device or specific device platform. So we can choose from Android, iOS, Windows, phone, believe it or not, after all this time, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux as well. So uh, let's, let's just select in this instance, uh, Windows as our, as our device platform and uh, potentially iOS as well, just as, uh, as an example. So we've got those included. We can specify by location as well. So if we configure location, we can include or exclude any location that we specify, all trusted locations or selected locations. I'll come back to locations in a moment, but I'll toggle that off for now, but just to show you what that looks like. Client applications now here, is where we can apply some controls to uh, user access to target specific client applications that are not using modern authentication, that may be using legacy authentication. So if we configure this one, we can configure and select the client apps that this policy will apply to, modern authentication clients, 
include browser and mobile apps and desktop clients. Legacy authentication clients include Exchange Active Sync and other clients, which if you hover over the details, uh, specify that this includes older Office clients and other mail protocols such as POP, IMAP, SMTP, and etc. And there is a, a, a learn more there as well. So we can configure there by, uh, by client apps, but we will just demonstrate that quickly. We can also filter for devices, so we can uh, configure filters to apply policy to specific devices. And so we can create rules, include filter devices in policy or exclude filter devices from policy, and then add a expression uh, into here. So we can use uh, and and or uh, properties in here and choose from device IDs and device ownership and uh, operating system and a lot of attributes here that we can configure uh, by. So nice uh, examples in there. So we've got our users, we've got some cloud apps and actions. Now we need to look at some uh, access controls. What do we want to grant here? Well, in most cases, you would certainly be setting a conditional access to grant access. More of them are set to grant access than there are to block. There are certainly, certainly use cases for blocking access but for the most part we'll be granting access and we can uh, require multi-factor authentication or more recently we can require authentication strength um, and now it's just telling us here that it can't be used with require multi-factor authentication and as a result that is that is grayed out and unselectable so what is the authentication strength that we want to apply? Well, we can select from multi-factor authentication. We can select passwordless MFA, phishing resistant MFA. So there are some choices there. So we could select passwordless, uh, for example. That would be the authentication strength that would be required for this particular policy. There are also some uh, other selections we can apply. We can uh, choose to require that devices connecting to be marked as compliant. We can require devices to be hybrid Azure AD joined. We can require uh, an approved client application for devices that are connecting through conditional access. So we can force uh, users to use the Outlook uh, mobile application on iOS, for example, uh, rather than allowing the native um, iOS mail application. We can require app protection policy uh, to be uh, used as part of conditional access as well, so which ties into Microsoft Intune. Um, and we can uh, get into requiring password change as well, which ties into that risk-based conditional access. And finally, at the bottom here, we can choose whether we require all of these selected controls because we can select several, one or more, or we can require only one of the selected controls. So I'll click on to select. And now we can uh, go ahead and select how we want our policy to be created. We can uh, run it in report mode only. Uh, we can have it switched on, which I would never ever do at this stage, never ever turn a conditional access policy on straight away, always test it out with a small amount of users in the uh, in the policy to begin with. And if you're not ready at all, even for reporting mode, you can you can turn it off. Now before I click on create, I haven't clicked on session yet. Session policies are something else you can do with um, with conditional access and these are based on controlling access with session controls to enable limited experiences within specific cloud applications. And this can tie in very nicely with what is properly called Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, the CASB Microsoft solution. And it can um, do things like uh, only allowing the user's access to authenticate to applications on the online browser versions of the apps, for example, and not allow them to uh, use the, the full client versions, as an example. 
Uh, so app enforced restrictions is uh, is one of those options, and uh, we can also uh, use conditional access app control, sign in frequency, uh, which is the time period before a user is asked to sign in again, persistent browser session, allowing users to remain signed in after closing and reopening their browser window, customize continuous access evaluation, uh, or CAE, which allows access tokens to be revoked based on critical events and policy evaluations in real time, rather than relying on token expiration. So very powerful stuff. Disable resilience defaults. So during an outage, Azure AD will extend access to existing sessions while enforcing conditional access policies. Uh, and if a policy cannot be evaluated, access is determined by the resilience uh, settings. If uh, resilience defaults are disabled, access is denied once existing sessions expire. And then finally, require token protection for sign-in sessions. That's a preview feature, which uh, relates to a secure sign-in session requiring all long-lived tokens, the Azure AD session cookie and refresh token, to be bound to the device using software key binding or hardware security module binding where available. So I'm not going to configure any uh, session controls on this one. We're going to keep it fairly simple with some basic grant access controls, and we'll create that policy assigned to one user uh, and excluding a break glass account uh, in report mode only. So it has successfully created the policy. It doesn't take very long at all, and it's created there. And we can now see different states here. So we can see these policies that are already in place are set to on. They are fully functioning. And this one here is set in report mode only. Now you can also create policies from templates that are available to choose from. And if we go into there, we can see a, a decent range of options here, such as require multi-factor authentication for admins, so securing security info for uh, registration, blocking legacy authentication. We've got some of these all already, and we can go into to view the details of these. We can download the JSON file for them, but if we go in and uh, and view some of these, we can get a bit more detail on the policy summary on in terms of assignments and cloud apps or actions, exactly what these are going to do if you choose to implement them. So we can select the template, and if it's going to do what we need it to do, we can review it and create it and um, modify the policy name, the policy state, and uh, and once we've done that, we'll be good to go and, uh, and create the policy. So a really, really good way to um, create conditional access policies by using templates. Uh, and you can also upload policy files, another preview feature. So here you can um, uh, have a file that should contain a single JSON formatted conditional access policy that you wish to use. So you can upload that and create your um, policy from a policy file as well. There is a wonderful what if tool as well which you can use to go through scenarios of um, what will happen if uh, a certain uh, user or workload identity is um, is logging in. What will happen if, if they try it from uh, any cloud app or uh, a particular IP address or country or device platform? Uh, and then when you've selected all of these combinations of settings, you can click on what if and it will show you which conditional access policies will apply and, uh, and and which will not. So, for example, if we do a very simple one here, if we select uh, Chan Bing and select, we can click on what if, and you can see uh, policies that will apply. It's going to block all legacy sign-ins that don't support MFA. And it's also going to uh, apply policy number one, 
which is set for authentication strength based on passwordless MFA, which is the one we just set up in report mode only. And we can toggle to the tab which shows us the other conditional access policies that are not going to apply. Really cool stuff. So back to the main menu here, and we can see some insights and reporting. Um, now we need log analytics integration enabled in order to do that. And that's really outside of the scope of this particular video. The same with um, uh, diagnosing and solving problems. We can do that from, from here. We can do new support requests. We can go through a sign-in diagnostic and look at common problems and uh, get information there. Now in the manage section here, we can uh, look at uh, named locations. So we can uh, see uh, the, the named locations that are based on, on countries. Uh, you can add countries locations, IP ranges locations. You can f configure uh, a list of multi-factor authentication trusted IP addresses. And then when you have these in here, you can add these into your conditional access policies, as you saw earlier on. There are some custom controls here, which you can create. New custom controls, a preview feature. We'll not dwell on that too much. You can select terms of use here as well. So you can create a terms of use here for your organization. Um, and um, if we TOW, just to abbreviate it, upload a, a required PDF, which will com contain your terms of use for your organization, select language, display name, require the users to expand the terms of use, require them to consent on every device, expire consents on some durations, and uh, enforce with conditional access policy templates. Now, if you create a terms of use, and I'll not do it here because I don't have a PDF prepared for this, but should you do that, then once you've created it, you will be able to apply um, the, um, the terms of use as part of the actions of your conditional access uh, policies. So really cool stuff. Um, it's taken us out, so we'll just quickly navigate back into conditional access. So where were we? We were at terms of use. We can also uh, configure VPN connectivity by adding certificates and uh, and the like into our conditional access. This is probably going to be for organizations that are very stringent on their security and require uh, authentication to a uh, to a VPN to on premises and that sort of thing. We have authentication context, and we can create authentication contexts in here, uh, which again are, are used to secure application data in and actions in SharePoint and uh, Defender Cloud apps. So we can do things like. Uh, configure the context, assign conditional access policies to the context and tag resources. So if we click on authentication context there, we can manage that context. So uh, if we click on, on a new one, we can uh, add in uh, a name and a description and then uh, publish that context to the, uh, make it available for apps to use. So nice and easy to create there. Authentication strengths is another thing that we can create here. So um, these determine the combination of authentication methods that can be used. So we have some already here. We've got multi-factor authentication. We've got passwordless MFA, phishing resistance MFA. We can add some more in as well. And you saw that these were available as strengths in the actions of our uh, condition access policies. So here we can add in some more and we can choose from FIDO2 security key require require these strengths uh, and so on and so forth. So there's lots of great stuff here that you can uh, that you can add in in terms of authentication strength. Classic policies I, I really wouldn't look at. Uh, not really worth, I don't even know why it's there anymore. And then finally, other than starting a new support request. The last couple of things we have here are uh, the sign-in logs and uh, the audit logs. Now, earlier on, uh, you may remember I configured some identity protection policies. And one of those was, if you had eagle eyes, it was set to block access. And this is why it has resulted in uh, failures for 
the users that were applied to that. So Monica Geller, Chandler Bing, Rachel Green, we had some failures there. And if we click on those sign-in logs, we can get some info on um, the request IDs and the location, the device info, the authentication details. We can also look at conditional access and see where the result occurred. So we had a failure on require MFA when risky sign-ins are detected. So that's doing exactly what it was set to do. Excellent. Now, any conditional access policies that we have set to report only will, um, will appear here as, as well. We can monitor on that basis, so we can maybe try that in a short while and, and uh, try and generate something there. Uh, and then finally, we've got uh, the audit logs as well, which uh, show activity uh, over a period of time for monitoring. And you can filter this on the service of conditional access, but there's also different conditions in here as well for core directory and uh, uh, Azure AD management UX and so on and so forth. And you can expand onto these and uh, see the properties of those as well. Now, back in Azure AD Identity Protection from the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, and we can see now under the report section, under risky users, we have some entries. Now, I went and logged in as these three users uh, a little earlier on in between filming some of these clips for the video. And I did so by using a browser called the Tor browser, that's T-O-R. And it's a very, very useful tool, which is approved and recommended by Microsoft in their documentation, which I will share with you, uh, for this explicit purpose of testing um, identity protection, for testing risk-based access. So when you log in with the Tor browser and authenticate to Office 365 with a, a user, it will trigger the appropriate policy and it will either block access or grant access but either way with that Tor browser it's going to uh, register those as potentially risky users or risky sign-ins or risk detections and this is a really good way to simulate what what would happen within a uh, a tenant in this situation because um, you want to test out and see what options you have available to you. So um, use the Tor browser, very, very handy indeed. So under risky users, we can we can filter by uh, certain categories, dates and, and risk state and so on and so forth. We can click on the user that is at risk and we can see some details on their sign-ins. So you can navigate around here with a lot of different uh, methods. You can click on sign in events and it will take you into into the uh, list of events for user uh, interactive and non-interactive sign ins. It takes a few moments to build up the uh, the details sometimes. So here we go. And again, as we saw a little earlier, we can go through things like conditional access and report only and so on and so forth. So and there we go. Uh, risky user details. We can look at the sign-ons, the uh, the risky sign-ons, the user's risk detections. We can actually open uh, the password reset report for the selected user from here. We can see if uh, uh, we can generate a temporary password there, right, right from within here, which is uh, which can be useful. And we can, if we want to, from here, we can confirm the user is compromised. We can uh, check on the user from here and confirm them as compromised. And this confirms to Azure AD that the selected user is currently compromised. And Azure AD will move the selected user to high risk and optimize future risk assessment. Important note here, the action cannot be reversed and it may take a few minutes. So don't try and resubmit the, the request if you do it. I won't do it in this instance, so there we go. 
uh, risky workload identities. We we don't have any service principles set up here, so we don't have anything we're dealing pretty much in users here, but take the time to learn about workload identities as well. We'll not delve into them in the video though. Uh, risky sign-ins. Uh, if we wait a moment, we, we may have some risky sign-ins detected on this page. Let's wait and see. And again, we've got some filtering options for dates and on months and the like. And you do have to be patient sometimes in these portals. It can take a while for, for it to present its information back to you. So um, this one's taking a bit of time. Oh, there we go. And we're getting the same sort of results. So, and you'll find this, that the risky users are quite often closely associated with or are the same list of uh, risky users. So we can click on Rachel in this example and we can see that Rachel signed in from Utrecht. So if we click on there, we can get some info about that. Uh, and it takes you into a very, very similar um, flyout pane there where we see the, the risk report, the sign-ins, the risky sign-ins, the user's risk detections and the sign-in uh, risk detection. So if we click on all of these, we can, it takes you into lots of different panels. We can get further information and uh, make decisions based on uh, these insights and intelligence. So lastly, we have risk detections on here, which um, similar principle, it uh, will go through and bring the list of risk detections. And as you can see, there's a lot of overlap with a lot of how these look, especially when you get into the fly up panels, you can get to the same areas from different places in a lot of these situations. So, uh, and you can also see um, the recommendation up here that I alluded to earlier, where it recommends migrating identity protection policies to conditional access for more conditions and more controls. But that doesn't mean that this is not a, a useful area still uh, to to come in and look at certain uh, reports and settings and so on and so forth. And in such settings, we can have a look at the users at risk detected alerts. So we can see here uh, that we have uh, matches for users that are in the global administrator, security administrator or security reader roles are automatically added to this list if that user has a valid email or alternate email configured. So the alerts will be sent uh, of any users at risk to anyone you have in this list. And the alert on a user risk level uh, at or above settings can be controlled between high, medium, and low again. You can also configure a weekly digest report that can be uh, sent to uh, users. And uh, again, users in the global admin, security admin, or security reader roles are automatically added to that list if they have a valid email or alternative email address. So there we go. That takes us pretty much to the end of uh, our video on conditional access and Azure AD identity protection. This is one that probably could have mutated into two or three videos to, to get a bit more granular, but for the context of initial learning and initial overview of this for you uh, in learning Azure AD and Microsoft 365, and potentially also studying for the MS 102 exam guide, I've kept it um, fairly high level. And we can always revisit these topics in more granular detail a little down the line. So with that said, let's uh, start winding this video up. And that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again on the channel. It's massively appreciated. I never take it for granted. So thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the subscribes and likes and shares. And most importantly, the comments. I love to receive comments and questions from you regarding the video content, and I'm always happy to help. So please do check me out on Twitter. You can find me at uh, 
M365 Rising, and uh, I'll see you on the next video real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.